The foundation of an IPM or integrated pest management program is to maintain the health of plants. Many insects and disease agents only affect unhealthy or stressed plants. Others will affect healthy as, as well as stressed plants, but by maintaining the overall health of the plant, we're going to reduce the incidence of disease. So to do this, we want to consider fertility, water management, but it really starts with establishing plants properly to begin with. So when we think of establishing a healthy plant, we want to consider the soil conditions, we want to think about how deep we plant, but the first thing we want to think about is how we space those plants in the landscape. Today we're going to look at plant spacing. We want to make sure when we put plants out in the garden that we're giving them enough room to reach their mature size. Now when plants are placed too closely together like this, they become crowded and they're competing for water, for nutrients, and for light. This is going to result in very irregular growth between one or more plants. In the worst case scenario, one plant might completely outcompete the other and cause it to die. What I expect to see with this crepe myrtle is this half getting shaded is going to grow um, poorly. We're going to have a rather lopsided look. So the best solution would be to go ahead and move it out and give it enough space to reach its mature size. This will also allow the root system to develop fully and healthy and allow it to compete for water and nutrients. If you think about it, this is the reason we weed around our ornamental plants in the garden. By weeding, we're giving those plants a leg up on competition. Proper plant spacing also allows for good air circulation. When plants are crowded together, the air doesn't flow through them as readily. And when we have this, we get a lot of moisture accumulate on the leaves. It doesn't dry out from the dew or from irrigation. And it creates an environment that's conducive to fungal pathogens. So by spacing our plants out a little more and allowing for that good air circulation, we can reduce the likeliness of fungal pathogens. Sometimes we can take advantage of the competition for light in our garden to create shady habitats. In this case, we have an overstory tree, a walnut, that creates a dappled shade to the plantings below. And underneath it, I have an understory tree, which is a red bud, and this cultivar is Burgundy Hearts. It has a reddish foliage color, which benefits, especially in the heat of the summer, it benefits from a little dappled shade. Now beneath that canopy, I'll have an herbaceous ground cover. It's dormant right now, but also needs shade. So again, we're having that uh, benefit of shade from our tree. Now here I have some crocuses that are still growing, and they're a little bit more sun dependent, but their active growing season occurs when all the foliage is off the trees. So we're avoiding that light competition. They also happen to be actively growing at a time the other ground cover and the tree are dormant, so we're limiting any competition for water or nutrients. We are establishing a new garden that utilizes this layering effect. We start with a pine canopy, and then we step down to an understory tree. In this case, we have a paper bark maple. Our ground layer is a planting of shrubs, mainly hydrangeas. Now I like to set out all the plants in a garden before I begin planting. This way I ensure proper spacing and I avoid crowding. The first thing I do is consider the viewpoints of the garden. For this garden, our, our main viewpoint is from the lawn, looking into it, and then the other would be from our sitting bench, looking into the garden. So these are my two main viewpoints. And what I do with that is set the tallest plant material to the back of those views. And I really like to start at the back and work my way out. That way I can keep the plants uh, spaced properly. And in the back here I have a quick fire hydrangea. This cultivar can reach a mature height of six to eight feet. So it's a pretty significant planting. As I step out from that, I bring the canopy layer down a little bit to plants that mature at about three to five feet. From our bench view, the backdrop of that is a uh, nine bark Diablo, and this will reach a mature height of six to eight feet. And I step down from that to some little lime hydrangeas that'll be about four feet when they mature. And then in the center, 
of the planting, I have my lowest material, which will reach a height of about three feet. Now the next thing I need to consider is the individual plant spacing. Let's start with this incredible hydrangea. Now I'm beginning with some really small plant material. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine this little six inch plant maturing to a width of four to five feet, but that's how big this cultivar reaches. So I wanna make sure as I'm setting my plants that I give it that much space to grow. So to do this, I like to use just a simple measuring stick. This is a four foot um, measuring stick. And so I'm gonna measure from the center of the plant. Um, it has a mature width of five feet. So I wanna measure two and a half feet or 30 inches from the center of the plant. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that with a stake. Another thing you might do is use a tool or your heel to kind of drag that a three foot circle around the edge of the plant. Now, when we look at plant growth, we can get that information from the labels or from plant catalogs, and usually it's presented in a range. So for this one, they say four to five feet wide. But we have such a long growing season that I tend to lean on the larger size when spacing my plants. Otherwise, I find they tend to be a little bit crowded. Now, adjacent to this, we have another hydrangea called City Line Rio. And this one matures to a much smaller size. It'll be about two to three feet. And again, I'm gonna lean on that larger size. So I'm gonna take 18 inches from the center of my plant and it'll grow, uh, let me get some stakes. It'll grow 18 inches in either direction. So if I look over um, to my previous marking, I have that set at 18 inches. So these two plants are spaced so that this one has enough room to grow and the Incredible also has enough room to grow and they're not gonna run into each other and compete. Now if you look at the next set of City Line Hydrangeas, I have a little group of three and you can see how much closer they are together than this Incredible. So when you're setting plants in the garden, remember to consider the point of view work from one edge out to the other, and remember to consider the individual plant needs.